rigged with a hull and an outboard motor. Directed by Michael Berry. The tugboat is upside down. Nicole pops up beside it, a smile on her face. Jonah leans to help her onto the motorboat. Back to the drawing board. It wouldn't have tipped if you hadn't made such a sharp turn. She rolls her eyes. Jonah lifts her into the boat and leans down for the tub. It tipped because there's not enough weight in the bow. No way! Listen, we're gonna be up against a pretty heavy competition. I just wanted to see how it's going to perform. Cool it with the high-speed stuff, or we won't have an entry for the World Championship bathtub race. It wasn't my driving that made it tip. Jonah shakes his head. When do you have to have the tub registered? Next week. Is it ready? Almost. Except for the problem in the bow. There is no problem in the bow. Grant smiles. Just your piloting. Jonah moves away from Nicole to the front of the boat. At the aquarium, people mill about the killer whale statue. Sea otters float around in a tank. Oh, aren't they adorable? JL, Donna, and Dunbar watch them through a window inside. Where'd you find our new sea otter, JL? Just south of Hecate Strait. He was all by himself. He must have been separated from the rest of his family. He's from the same breeding colony as the others. A couple of sea otters do flips in the water. JL, I've got some bad news for you. What's the matter, George? We're going to have to terminate your contract on the seal recovery program. Why? No funds. What else? Oh, well, that's a shame. It's a great program. They head outside. We also don't have funds for that new bloodline from Japan. I guess there's no money for the exotic birds you talked about then. Donna shakes her head. We could sure use some color around here. Well, there's a lot of things we could use around here, but the funds are just not available. There must be something you can do. <laughs> do you have any suggestions? Hi. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to escort the kids' bathtub race entry on its trial run. Bathtub race? It's an annual event. Over 100 bathtubs with outboard motors race from Nanaimo to Vancouver. Some of the bathtubs are pretty sophisticated, mind you. 36 miles across the strait. In a bathtub? People come from as far away as Australia just to be in it. When does this event take place? Oh, in a couple of weeks. It's the end of the Summer Sea Festival. Are there any cash prizes? No, just a lot of hard-won and highly prized trophies. What about publicity? Well, it gets world coverage. Well, now that sounds like something a corporate sponsor would love. That's a good idea. We could get a sponsor to back our entry. Our entry? We don't have an entry. The kids. I could get a sponsor to make a publicity donation to the aquarium if the kids are one of the winners. Great way to raise money for that exotic bird. I think the Japanese bloodline has a much higher priority. But George, don't you think we should wait to see if the kids are willing to go along with this scheme? Oh, Grant, we know you can talk them into it. But... Come on, Donna, we've got a sponsor to find. But you know kids. Tell them it's for the aquarium. Dunbar oh. checks his watch and walks away. Grant is left standing there incredulous at the Roberts' kitchen table. If he wants more life in the otter pool, why doesn't he take danger for a few days? And why can't they find some exotic bird from around here? Well, people don't go to the aquarium to see something they can see in their own backyard. We'd like to help you, Dad, but... But what? We're only entering the tub for fun. For fun? No way. I'm going after the World Cup. Who said you're going to be piloting it anyways? Well, I'm the natural choice. Why? Because you're a boy? No, because I have more experience with boats than you do. Listen, it was my idea to build the tub, Jonah. Hey, uh, isn't there anything at the aquarium that you two would like to see upgraded? I know it's an imposition, but I'm kind of on the spot. How about the Harbor Seal program? Donna was saying that the aquarium couldn't afford it anymore? That's right. The last budget cut axed that program. Okay. We'll donate the tub to sponsor the rescue program. Okay with you? Sure. And I know just the sponsor. Thanks. Well, that settles that. Grant gets up to clear his plate. It doesn't settle who's going to pilot the tub in the race. Nicole joins him. Well, I think the rules settle that. As Nicole offers her plate to their pet otter danger, Grant hands her a pamphlet. Section F. Rule 8. Danger gets Grant's leftovers, too. All tub drivers must have reached the age of 14 years by the day of the race. Oh, no. I just found that the other day. Have some sympathy for me, Danger. My brother won again. 
I know I should have mentioned this to you before this, but uh, it's a man's world. But women rule it. <laughs> he kisses her on the forehead. You do around here anyway. <laughs> a seal sits in a red wagon. Grant picks it up. How are you doing, little guy, huh? Dunbar walks over, smiling. I found a sponsor for Jonah and the coal. The buy and sell has agreed to back our tub and pay for the new shipping of that bloodline from Japan if our tub is one of the winners. I think the kids have other ideas. Do they have a sponsor yet? No, but they're working on it. Dunbar looks up. JL and Donna approach. Guess what? You found a sponsor for Jonah and Nicole. How did you know that? Men know these things. Well, anyway, a friend of mine who owns a hotel said if we win, she'll buy us a Scarlet Ibis. Well, I think we'd better check with the kids first before we make any decisions. We found the sponsor. So did I. They went for it. Jonah and Nicole walk up. They'll give us $500 for the feeding and the care of the seals if we win. Well, Donna, what are we going to do with three sponsors? Why don't we enter three tubs? Terrific idea. Super great. Who's going to pilot the other two tubs? You're the more mechanically inclined. It would be an honor to represent the women. I'm afraid I'm also going to have to concede to the more superior boatsman, uh, boat person. He smiles at Grant, who stares back soberly. Dunbar raises his eyebrows questioningly. Grant thinks about it. 36 miles across that strait? In a bathtub? No way. Come on, Dad. Go for it. Think of the aquarium. Think of the glory, if you win. Grant lets a smile play across his face. At the Roberts house, Grant works on his tub as JL comes over. Grant? She skips down the gangway to join him on the dock. Hi. I need to talk to you. He stands. Well, uh, I got a lot of work to do. I'm trying to do a tune-up on my engine. Grant, this is important to me. Okay. What is it? You really want to win this race tomorrow, don't you? <laughs> well, nobody enters a race to lose. Mm -hmm. And you're still bothered about me beating you in the practice run. Of course not. Sure you are. And it's because I'm a woman, isn't it? Yes, it is. Crap. She puts her hand on his arm. I like you. And whether I win or lose tomorrow, I'm not going to let that change the way I feel about you. Good. And I won't let it change the way I feel about you either. He pulls her to him, and they kiss passionately. You're a very beautiful woman. And you're kind, and you're, you're gentle, you're intelligent. You have the most devastating green eyes I've ever seen. And it's not the race that's bothering me. It's you. You've been bothering me since the first day we met. Well, I, uh, I still got a lot of work to do. So you mentioned. They lean towards each other. Say by the bell. They have impeccable timing. You want to stay for dinner? JL's smile fades. She withdraws slightly. I better not. She walks away. Jackie. She turns back. Never mind. She walks back up the gangway.
the next day. In case you've just joined us, this is Don Abbott in the CKWW Sports Chopper bringing you live coverage of the 19th Annual Great International Bathtub Race. And I'm glad to say that with me today is Barb Peters, herself a three-time winner of this race. Thank you, Don. Newcastle Channel, look at the fans. There are thousands of them there today really? for the yeah. race. Uh, we've never had a crowd like this, Don. It is incredible. And the weather is absolutely perfect. Well, Barb, CKWW Action Weather promises temperatures in the low 80s with moderate winds from the northwest. That's our only problem. I'm going to keep an eye on those waves because choppy water is the biggest threat to today's covers. Grant picks up a helmet and walks over to Dunbar, who is waiting with his boat. I don't know how I got into this, George. You're the best man for the job, Grant. Grant secures his helmet and gets into his tub. Nearby, Donna hands JL her helmet. Wish us luck. Here you go. <laughs> and Jonah gets set in his tub. But I'm glad to be here because the perspective from this helicopter is absolutely fantastic. Well, the jumpers are checking last minute details, and this race will take them the 36 miles from the Nymo to Vancouver. And Barb, as you know, when this race started 19 years ago, these boats really were just old tubs with eight horsepower engines. Times sure have changed. Why they sure have. You know, today's tubs are streamlined. Aquarium ship heads toward Jonah with Dunbar, Donna, and Nicole. Looks like Jonah Roberts has had a bit of a swim out there today. He is the vessel in North JL stops to help Jonah. Jack, are you okay, Jonah? Jonah, are you alright? Yeah! We're standing by! Dunbar, Donna, and Nicole watch nervously as JL helps Jonah right his tub. Come on, we have a race to the information we have right now is that 024 isn't the only tub in the water with trouble. Several tubs have had their plugs pulled, and we've just heard that the leading pilot, Mike Stewart, at tub 999, has flipped off Point Grey, but I wouldn't count him out yet. All right, that leaves 63 tubs in this race, but I expect that only half of that number are going to finish. Okay, Barb, Barb, that's Pete's plumbing tub driven by Paul White in the lead, and he's followed closely by Grant Roberts. Roberts is putting on an amazing show. This has turned into a two-horse race. Well, let's make that a two-tub race, Don. <laughs> okay. These two are showing unbelievable determination. It looks like the two, they are, they're both back in the race. You know, you've got to admire the courage of Jonah Roberts and the sportsmanship of DeVell. You know, I really hope they can catch up and stay in the race, Don. We're now 
now in view of the finish line at Kitts Beach, and what a hive of activity. There's hundreds and thousands of excited fans awaiting the arrival of the leading tubs. However, you know, the race is not over when they hit the beach. Tubbers have to beach their boats with part of the tub remaining in the water, and then they've got to run up the beach and ring that finishing bell to claim it an official finish. You know, Don, part of the fun of this race is the carnival atmosphere in the beach. You know, there's no telling what's going to happen when this crazy bunch gets together. It's just got to be the most enjoyable tradition here on the West Coast. Too bad we're stuck with them here for this one. What a great view we do have of English Bay. And now back to the race. We're watching tubs 237 and 462. They are neck and neck, and what a battle they're putting on for the fans here. Josh Roberts in 237, number 462, and Paul White, they're right alongside each other. The sides of each boat buffeting the other vessel. They better be careful. Those two tops are as evenly matched as two competitors can be. And as they fly in close on the finish line, well, it's difficult to predict who's going to win it at this point. This is an incredible show. You know, these tops and their pilots have taken a tremendous pounding in this race. They must be feeling it now, especially in their legs as they bounce over each and every wave. But, you know, if you want to win, you've got to ignore the pain and keep your eyes on that finish line. If they keep this pace up, we could be looking at a new world record. Dunbar, Donna, and Nicole cheer Grant on from the ship. <laughs> Paul White is right behind him at number 462. Now, you know, this lead could change several times before they actually come down to the finish line. Barb, Barb, look at this. Paul White in number 462 has nudged ahead. I can't believe how tight this race is. The chute leading to the finish line at Kitts Beach has been cleared of the many vessels who are crowding for a victory vantage point. They are packed like sardines down there. They're all straining to get one glimpse of the winner of today's spectacular race. Okay, Barb, here comes our two leaders, Dr. Grant Roberts, number 237. He's got the lead by about a boat length. It looks like he may maintain this all the way to the finish line over number 462, Paul White. And as they come down to the beach, it is indeed number 237, the working driver, Dr. Grant Don, Roberts. this is a great moment for, for him. You know, he wasn't even certain he was going to be in this race. That's and right, now, Barb. it looks like he's going to win it. Well, this is amazing. He's bringing his vessel up to the beach. Now, he must beach it, as you said, and keep his part of the boat in the water. And it looks like he's done that. Grant Roberts is now on the beach, followed by Paul White, who jumps out of his tub as well as he smacks into uh, Dr. Roberts. Now, at this point, look, Roberts' legs are obviously cramped, but he's going to give it everything he has got. The fans are urging him on as he comes up to ring that bell. He leads by about 20 yards over Paul White. You know, he just takes one quick look behind, and what support this the is fans great. are giving him. He can't help but be encouraged by this reception. Yes, Grant Roberts, number 237, part of the race. He's won. He's won the bell. The signal is winning of this he event. Is official. It's official. The winner of this year's great international bathtub race is Vancouver's own Dr. Grant Roberts. Oh, well, what can you say? Congratulations, Atta Dr. Boy, Grant Grant. Roberts. Oh, 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 Listen, we better get ashore and join them. This is the one to ride out. It's almost as if I was in the race myself. But we've got to go back. This race is not over. There are other ones out there. The remaining tuppers are going to be landing on the beach any minute right now. Here he comes. That's Rob Watson, number 134. Number 126 is not too far behind. And number 155 is all alone. Oh. There's somebody in a drink. You know, for a lot of these people, you know, oh, no. Well, the tubs are piling up. It's... And all in all, a very exciting and memorable finale to this year's race. Let's go down to Commodore Norm Kelly for the awards ceremony. To present the Distinguished Bathtub Race World Championship Cup to Dr. Grant Roberts, pilot of the winning buy and sell entry. Where's Dr. Roberts? Grant goes up on stage. He accepts his large trophy. Say a few words, Dr. Roberts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hold on this way, Dr. Roberts. Thank you. Holding up his trophy, he heads back through the crowd to his family. And in second place, from Seattle, Washington, we have Paul White, pilot of Pete's Plumbing, in what must have been one of the closest, most exciting races in the history of this event. White accepts his trophy and heads off stage. As you know, every year we award a special trophy to the tubber who displayed the best sportsmanship during the race. This year, we'd like to award two trophies. First to the pilot of the Coast Bastion Inn Tub, Jackie Duval for sacrificing her position to come to the aid of a fellow tubber. And here she is. Commodore Bill McGuire making the presentation. JL goes up to accept her trophy. And the second to Jonah Roberts, pilot of the Lee Ron Plastics Tub for his extraordinary never say die recovery. This is the endurance trophy. Jonah accepts his trophy. And there you have it, folks. Those are our winners. Let's hear it for them. Well, that wraps up this year's event.
and we'd like to see you all back here next year. Thank you very much. Later, Grant pulls his jeep to a stop in the aquarium parking lot. He gets out and walks the path. Hi. Hi. I've been looking all over for you. What are you doing here so early? I just made a small delivery. Another sea otter? No, it's a surprise. About, About last, last night. <laughs> you, you first. first. <laughs> he nods for her to speak. It's been a long time since I felt like this about anyone. Me too. I kind of like it. <sighs> Me too. It's a little scary. Uh-huh. Well... He strokes her arm and takes her hand. We'll just take it one step at a time. Jonah comes outside. Dad? They turn to him, still holding hands, which Jonah notices. Um, uh, you have to come and see the... Uh... It's a surprise. Oh, I love surprises. Jonah leads them inside, their hands still clasped. Grant holds the door for J.O. They walk through a jungle area. meet up with Dunbar, Nicole, and Donna. Hey, we're gathered. He <laughs> notices the others looking upward and follows. Oh, what a beautiful Scarlet Ibis. My friend's very happy with the publicity she's been getting from the race. I just heard from Japan. Our sea otter's been shipped out today. Terrific. And the check we got from Laron Plastics is keeping the seal rescue program a little bit longer. And the aquarium, of course, is the real winner. You can say that again. The aquarium, the aquarium, of course, is, is the real winner. winner. Now you can say that again. <laughs> and the aquarium, of course, is the real winner. They go back to admiring the bird. Executive producer Paul Saltzman. Executive script consultant John T. Dugan. Supervising producer John M. Eckert. Post-production producer Paul Quigley. Guest cast. Race official R.N. Bob Pedersen. Commentators Don Franks, Peter Gross, Deanie Petty. Music composed and conducted by Don Gillis. Music supervised by David Green. Executive in charge of production for the CBC, Nada Harcourt. Produced in association with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, the Disney Channel, Telefilm Canada. Produced by Danger Bay Productions Incorporated. Copyright 1985.